We are beginning a series, a class today titled Pursuing and Perfecting. Write in your notes, it's a class. As Holy Spirit was speaking to me, I think we're going to have workbooks. It's a workshop. We'll have workbooks. One, two, three, four, read in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14 in the Amplified. Not the AMPC, but the Amplified, AMP. We read Hebrews 12, 14, pursuing and perfecting. We started this series on Wednesday. Wednesday it was just an introduction, but today we are diving deep. Say deep. One, two, three, four, read. Continually pursue peace with everyone and the sanctification without which no one will ever see the Lord. What a heavy verse. Very heavy. Two big words there. I want the guy to underline just the first two. Continually and pursue. These words will translate to a renewed engagement. These words will force us, if we are serious about seeing the performances of God in our lives, we are going to be forced by these two words to engage in something that I will explain as we go along. We are now going to read the same verse in the AMPCs, the Amplified by the Compact One. Hebrews 12, 14. Thank you, Jesus. These words, keep on writing them. These will be key words, trending words. One, two, three, four, read. That's another big word to strive is to apply extra effort. It's not ordinary. The one we read the other side continually, it means this is a non-stop thing. You can't stop it. You stop it, you are doomed. As far as God's science and scheme of things are concerned, strive to live in peace with everybody. Look at your neighbor and say, including you, no issues, young Israel, and no issues. And pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever. There's one small word that worries me there. It's in the bracket, ever. It means you can pray in capital letter tongues, you can fast, you can do all you want, you can give in millions on the altar. If it's not from a holy heart, you won't see me, God, manifesting in your life, performing wonders for you. Troublesome word. Mm. We are now going to read the same verse in the New International Version, which is NIV. It has another word I want you to write. I know number one, you wrote continually. Number two, you wrote pursue. Number three, you wrote strive. Now you are going to write another big one. One, two, three, four, read. Highlight the first line. Mm. Not some effort. This is serious business this morning. Limbro, please, I want everyone to pay attention. Don't let the anti-church and anti-word and anti-sermon demons come and cause you to have some distracted mind here. One, two, three, four, eight. Let's read it again. Can you see that all these verses, they open with a very compelling statement. Are you noticing? Make not some effort. Every effort. It means you employ all your energy to this matter. You employ every effort, all your energies must be channeled to this matter of ensuring that day after day you are at peace with everyone, not certain people. A 
learn to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. Let's get it in a, a translation called TPT, the Passion Translation. Please, you must make every effort to read your, your verses, your Bibles in different translations. I saw a verse yesterday. I was, I was in the office. I laughed. There was no one. I was just laughing. The way the verse... It was my first time to see, you know, this particular matter presented in this way. In Proverbs 31. Amen. <laughs> Let's read. One, two, three, four, read. Huh? All these verses, they start, they are presented in a compelling way. In every relationship, be swift to choose peace. Tell your neighbor from today you are fighting alone. In every relation, be what? Be swift. Swift to choose peace over what? Over competition, conflicts, and arguments. And run swiftly to what? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Maybe just to help you so that we, we just quickly, because of time, get to grasp the real core of this message. These verses are telling us that holiness or moral uprightness is the atmosphere, only atmosphere under which God performs for a human being. When it says you'll not see God, this is not like a movie issue. It means you won't see his performances no matter how you pray. So if I'm going to God, I say, God, I want grace and mercy and favor to buy my own house. Grant me the grace so that this miracle happens. Oh, I want to be healed, Father, from this disease. We are a Christian. We're talking about people who have been Christians for years. I want to be healed from this chronic disease. I'm troubled. I don't want to die before my time. God says, no problem. I'm waiting to see holiness. Once I see it, you will see my performances. It's powerful. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. The theme is pursue and perfect. We are now going to get the other big word. 2 Corinthians. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Mantolobusi kamaya. Liprohashina masukana. Second Corinthians 7, verse number 1. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living Sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Oh, Shalina Masuka Babaya. Try and true with that skin. Oh, Holy Ghost, I'll be a living sanctuary for Let's read one, two, three, four. Read. Therefore, Having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Praise a Father in the name of Jesus. May I not look at Apostle Justice May I not hear this man of God, but may I hear you speaking direct to me.
through him in the name of Jesus. Let me make these preambles or these uh, opening statements. When I get born again and you get born again, becoming a Christian officially, according to God's plan, that marks the beginning of an enrollment towards a particular lifestyle. Let me repeat it. The moment I become born again by way of accepting Jesus and you become born again by way of accepting Jesus and you happen to join an assembly of God's people who are called Christians. According to God's original plan, that arrangement or your being born again and joining a church marks the beginning of an enrollment that does not have graduation day on earth. You'll graduate the day Jesus appears if you did well. Are you getting it? I'm sorry to submit to you that a lot of us pastors, a lot of churches all over the world, a lot of Christians who are living what is officially called an offside Christianity. We are actually busy with nothing. Because as far as these scriptures we have read in different translations are concerned, if I, Justice, and you seated there, are not pursuing holiness and perfecting it. We are not pursuing God. It means God is going that direction. We are going that direction. Write that statement. If as we are seated there, you call yourself a Christian, you come to church, you are even in the choir maybe, not to put in the light choir, or you are ushering, you, 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 you are tithing faithfully, but you are not enrolled. In the discipline of waking up every day to pursue moral uprightness, to pursue peace with all people, God classifies you under jokers and clowns because He's saying, What's the use of your coming to church? The effort you are employing in it. But the outcome is you won't see God. Why come to church if in the course of the week when problems come, God will not show up to help me? Because I live my life in a way that does not create an atmosphere for him to perform. I'm fighting with people. I'm angry. I'm lying. I'm cursing. But God, show up. God says, I don't work like that. I first require an atmosphere. Create it. I will show up. I read the Bible the other day in uh, Joshua 3, 5. I read it. I passed. Something said, read again. After the children of Israel were we're just about to attack Jericho. So God spoke to Joshua and then God, Joshua went to the people. I said, wow. He said, Joshua, Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders for you. Apostle Remy was here last week. He told us we are in a season of fulfillment. Amen. But there are conditions. In fact, it's, he, it's his sermon that started the trouble we are in now. Joshua said, I want you to, 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 to visualize this scenario. The people are busy with their lives. Joshua comes. Hey, hey, everyone, everyone, stop, stop. God is coming. Let's say he spoke to them on a Monday. God will show up Thursday, guys. Thursday. Everyone who needs a breakthrough, God will, he will show up Thursday. He's coming to perform that miracle you've been crying for. 
He's coming on Thursday. In the Old Testament days, God would manifest literally. You could see the evidence. You could hear his voice. Like in the days of Moses, they would see a cloud coming. And then a voice would speak. So Joshua says to them, guys, sanctify yourself. <laughs> For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. People started running. Hey, sorry, we fought. I was angry at you, but now please, I forgive you. God is coming tomorrow, I release you. Please, here is your money. I didn't want to pay you just out of greed. Get your money back, please. God is coming tomorrow. People were busy. Whoever had a girlfriend, God is coming tomorrow. Please, no more WhatsApp. Delete my number. God is coming tomorrow. It was a serious matter. I'm creating a scenario so that you can realize the seriousness of the matter. We've become a church that takes God for granted. His standards in particular. We think God can just perform a miracle anyway. I live anyhow. God is merciful. He will come in my mind to perform a miracle. We move him with baritone and soprano. Move! Oh God, he says, I'm waiting for your holiness. No moving. Pray. The reason, this is, this is, this is, this is shocking. The church is full of church attending sufferers. A. C. S. Church attending sufferers. Things are shut. Things are hard. People are laughing at us. It's like our God has died. No, his hands are tied. No holiness. No performance. Just like that. You can pray all you want until you give him his atmosphere. He won't move. Says I'm the Lord God. I don't change. Look at Malachi 3 6. I'm the Lord God. I don't change. I don't change. I don't move with the trends of times. I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same today. I'm the same forever. We've been crying. We fast and pray. The only result we get in the fasting and praying is just losing weight. No breakthroughs. Malachi 3.6 He says, I'm the Lord God. I don't change. Because before God blesses justice or blesses you, He checks for two things. This is shocking. He checks my attitude. How am I now as I'm praying for that miracle? How is my attitude towards other people? Am I at peace with them? How is my conduct now? Because holiness is upright conduct, upright conduct, godly conduct. First, at the heart level. Secondly, at the thoughts level, the sum total of thoughts, are they godly? Thirdly, at the actions level. Fourthly, at the behavior level. Hey, well. Fifthly, at the motives level. You bring your offering, why? To be seen? Or to honor God? A treating other people level. These are levels. What did I say? At heart level. At the mind level. Can you imagine God looks at my thoughts and your thoughts? When you are praying, his x-ray is zooming on your heart. 
You want a very urgent miracle. God says, we are still x-raying your thoughts. Was Chuck. Oh God, arise if you don't show up and go, so I will perish. He says, don't worry, I'm still x-raying your attitude towards your fellow human beings. I'm x-raying the sum total of your actions. How do you act? I'm still x-raying your behavior. Did you write it? This, that's why I said it's a workshop. If God allows us and empowers us and graces us, we are going to give you workbooks. I must have my workbook. Which you only fill in the evening before you sleep. You, you do an assessment. How was the sum total of my thoughts today? Were they Bible aligned? Were they faith governed? You tick the box under the thoughts section. How was my heart today generally? Since I arrived at work, was it sweet and good? No matter You tick the box. How was my talk today? Can you can you imagine holiness at talk level? Did any unholy word come out of my mouth? Did I lie? You tick the box. Why are we doing it without this standard? We are not included on those who will be raptured. We are just clowns in church. Not going to heaven. At attitude level, how is your attitude? The attitude is we are we are in the at the pick and pay, you see? We are we, we want to go to the to the till. We are all rushing. And then this guy eh, pushing me. Pu- hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> you go to your book, you take the pick and pay incident, you put a cross. I failed at attitude level. Around 2, a, uh, 2 p.m., you are just moving in the office. Someone say, hey, please, can you please top me with 20 rand? I need to get AFC. Where do you think I get money? On the 15th, you are mad. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine God wants our language, our vocabulary to be holy sized? <laughs> or holy tized? Say, Father, have mercy on us. I'm sure you're being answered now. If God said to Joshua, I'm God, I've got all the power. And Joshua, you are my man. You took over Moses. You took your position from Moses. You know how I perform wonders and miracles. I'm the one who parted the Red Sea. We are now going to take over Jericho. But sanctify the people. If I find that the people are holding grudges against each other, the cloud will appear. Oh, there are grudges, the cloud goes. The whole congregation suffers because the congregation is not aligned. Then members start hoping from church to church. Pastor prayed for me, I didn't get the job. It's not a question of pastor prayed or didn't pray. The atmosphere was not there. The ground, the required ground on which God performs was not created. Pray. It must sink. It must sink. Sonia, all of us, including Apostle Justice, there, there is another miracle you are looking for, right? Everyone in this house, there's a breakthrough you want. 
God has prescribed the prerequisite, the condition. You want things to change. You want to see God giving you amazing breakthroughs. Let me sum it up like this. Go back to your notes. Every day a true Christian who's expecting to be raptured when Jesus comes back, they wake up to do the following things. Number one, they wake up to pursue holiness. Number two, they wake up to perfect their conduct. Number three, they wake up to witness, tell others about Jesus before these people are caught unaware by the sounding trumpet. You remember Jesus said, this is war. If you are not on our side, the side of God, you are against us. If you are not helping, we are making it worse. God doesn't want any person should perish and go to hell. And we are not helping in that, in that exercise. He says you are making it worse. Can you imagine? From today, it's a new day for all of us. Are you understanding me? Amen. You're waking up from today will be different. You wake up with a mission. Because people must see God through your life. And for that to happen, you must create that atmosphere for God to manifest himself through you. Otherwise, God will hold you guilty that I would have touched your relatives if your life was right. But your, your, your needy relatives could not be touched because they were connected to a clown Christian who never pursues the imperatives. We are saved to pursue holiness. We are saved to perfect it. We are saved to live holy lives. I always thought Holy Spirit is given to us so that you are able to show off by speaking in tongues. Because even the tongues are for showing off in the church of today. I'm telling you, it's like... <laughs> You can't speak. We speak. Raku uh, shariba shuka. What's wrong with you? You can't speak. Therefore, showing off. Holy Spirit is for making holy living possible. That's the number one mission. He has come to us to change our terrible characters and behaviors. Put in other words, he has come to change us from being mean, sulky, stubborn people to sweet individuals. Because our lives are supposed to be a sweet smelling aroma before Jehovah. Are you hearing me? So God says to Joshua, go back to Joshua 3.5. Sanctify. Joshua says to the people, sanctify yourself. For tomorrow, God is going to be doing wonders. Let's now extract a thought there. It therefore means, if I truly, truly want God to change my life from being a shame to a wonder, I must stop asking for breakthroughs. I must stop. I must start asking God to sanctify me. To help me remove anything from my life that does not please Him. Which means then, when Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, because that verse is akin to the subject matter. Let's start from 31. Yeah, 31. I want that therefore. Let's read. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Are you aware that as we are here, there are people that are worried about some financial trouble? They want some money urgently. 
as we are here. They are worried about it. They want the money. Ask only by you, the one who's needing the money. No, they want the money. No, but it's actual of Nale Malmo. Best as naming it. No, speak the truth while in church. Uh, uh, uh. Almost all of us here were looking for money we don't have now. Yes, and we're worried about it. Therefore, do not worry saying, Why? How will I get the money? What shall I eat? How will I buy the things I urgently need? How will I pay the school fees for my kids? How will I pay the rent end of this month? You are here, sitting like a holy saint, and your car is on the red, no, no yes. petrol. <laughs> when you parked it there, the light was red already. I'm preaching and thinking, will I reach home? That's life for you. Don't worry about the red light in the car. So what must I do, Apostle? What is all this? Is God's scheme of things. It's God's standard. Look at verse 32. 32, it says, because so the church is full of Christians who live like heathens. We behave like heathens, eh? For after these things, the Gentiles, if you read it in the proper King James, it says, after these things, the heathens. Who is the King James proper? Or is the ASV, I think, that puts it like that. After all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, know where that you have need of all these things. Put in the New Living Translation. Verse 32. New Living Translation, please. 32 in the New Living Translation. Let's simplify it. Say, oh Lord, change me. Is anyone praying like me today that, Lord, I want to change? Because I don't know whether you are desperate like me. We need to show this world that we, we serve a mighty God. And God is prescribing his condition for him to show up through us. These things dominate the aha. Ask your neighbor, believer or unbeliever. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. So it means, Pastor Jerome, if most of the time I'm worried, will I be able to finish the school fees of my daughter this year? God says you are an unbeliever. When his, when his x-ray zooms on that thought, ah, unbeliever behavior. so simple. Heaven takes it serious. Worrying about material needs is, is not allowed in this kingdom. Yes, the way you look at me is like I'm the one saying it. We are just reading the verse. Maybe you didn't see it. Let's go back to 31. The way you are looking at me is like you didn't read it. I thought you read it. I'm sorry. Let's go back. Ask your neighbor to understand English. <laughs> Don't worry about these things. Which things? How will I pay the school fees? How will I buy the home? How will I make it? There's no petrol money. I don't want to be seen in a kumbi to work. I pay the bond for my house. How will I clear that debt? The moment the X-ray of heaven finds these thoughts predominant, you are classified under heathens. Unbelievers. The church is full of believers who don't believe. 33, let's go. Oh, let's read 32. Say line by line. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all you need. Can you imagine? God knows you need that money. He's telling angels, that will be taken care of. Let's just see how she behaves. 33. Put it in the new King James. Uh, but what? 
So every day, write it down. I and you from today, we must wake up to seek to pursue holiness first. Seek to pursue peace with all people. Seek first the kingdom of God. It's a sum total of what we are discussing. Kingdom simply means allowing what God wants to happen in you. His rule and dominion. And his righteousness. It means I'm always pursuing to align, you know, living a life that seeks to align to God's standard. When God sees me striving to live a life that aligns to his moral standard, he says, Angel, just push, touch someone there. That person must go and give that dear daughter of mine 3,000. Out of the blue, someone cha, comes, gives you 3,000. You didn't pray for it. You behaved for it. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? You didn't pray for it. You behaved well for it. At heart level, thoughts level, talk level, behavior level, attitude level, conduct level, motives level, treating others level, God says, let the money come. This makes me realize Christianity, we've been deceived, including myself. No, Christianity is not something that you say, now I'm a Christian, it's done. No, it's a daily thing. It's one discipline that must be approved daily. Because it's possible to be a Christian on Sunday, a devil on Monday. Yes. It's possible to be a Christian, you are seated here, Ah, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Mm. I am on. Uh, 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 that boyfriend, I just want to delete him. Sermon is too heavy. You're a Christian on Sunday. Eh? <laughs> you are fully repenting now. We're in a service, right? Monday, <laughs> this apostle just this thing. <laughs> if I let my boyfriend go, who will give me the money? How will I pay the rent? Christian Sunday, Devil Monday. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Before we sing, you know what I like about this sermon. It's very challenging, right? It's too heavy, right? It's even troubles among it. But what I like is the fairness of God. I hear God saying, it's okay. If you feel my standard is too much for you, you don't want it, fine. I'll exclude myself from your issues. Continue suffering. And also prepare to never see me when rapture happens. It's fine. God does not force anyone to change. He has made us free moral agents with the right to choose. You can choose him or choose to reject him. This message is so fair. God says, please, it's okay. From today, stop shouting at me to perform your miracle. The noise must stop. Behave for your miracles. Can you imagine? I've never heard this. For your miracles, no more bombarding me with requests, please. The game plan has changed. If you want to see me performing wonders for you, it is your behavior that will activate me. Why? Because of Psalm 84, verse number 11. Yes. If you don't see Psalm 84, 11 today, I wash my hands concerning your Christian walk. Don't say I never told you. Because Psalm 84, 11 is a cousin to this one. They are cousins. They WhatsApp each other. Same WhatsApp group. 
Read one, two, three for it. Underline from the no, make yellow from no. All this, make it yellow so that everyone can read it. Do we understand English here? No, like no. You want a promotion? Pa. You want healing? Pa. You want miracle money? Pa. What causes these breakthroughs to happen so easy? You behave for breakthroughs. Your talk, your attitude, your behavior, your conduct activates breakthroughs. Mm. When I saw this verse, I said, wow. No good thing with he with all. Can you see that those? Demagation. It never said no good thing or no breakthrough will God not perform from those who wake up at three and cry. I didn't see it say that. People are believing. They want, they want, apostle, my situation is agent. It needs serious prayer. God says, no, justice. It needs serious holiness. The more the trouble, the more holy you must live. Oh, they never told you this. I'm also hearing it for the first time. Remember, I'm just an oracle. Some of the things I'm speaking them here, they're not even on my nose. They are quickened. So if you see what you had my life, is in shameless things are bad. You know what you do? You rise and say, I want to be the nicest before God and before people. That's how you activate change. Before we were told you must get a powerful man of God. No, God told the powerful Joshua, unless they are sanctified, I'm not performing wonders. Things have changed today. I like this sermon because it's a mirror. It's speaking to me, it's speaking to all of us. The reason the church is full of church attending church member sufferers is because we have deviated from our core purpose. We are Christians for simply pursuing holiness, perfecting holiness, behaving in a godly way 24-7 and telling others about Jesus. If we don't feature there, God regards us as people who are lost in church. We are in church, but we no longer know the purpose. So from today, put yourself in a program. Hello? That one you need to write to record it. And if you are going to take it for granted, all your sufferings that will follow my hands are washed, including me. Justice, if you don't take this, your suffering from today, God is not responsible for it. From today, Put yourself on a new program of strictly monitoring your behavior, your talk, your conduct, your attitude towards other people. If you are angry at someone now, you don't want to see that man because he gave you two children is not supporting them. Yeah. Your heart is kissing him. When you see him or think about him, you may not kiss that audibly, but your heart is kissing him. God says, in that heart, I can't help you with those kids. Not because I don't have power, but your attitude blocks me. Let's pray. 
You know, it's so wonderful to preach a sermon that exempt you. Can you imagine that from today, from your troubles, I'm exempted. If you blame me, you are wicked. After today. <laughs> if after today you blame me for the delays of your breakthroughs, you are extra wicked. Because God has just opened our eyes. Then the breakthroughs are given based on how your life is before him. So how do you now factor me in your issues? I'm fighting my own battles. I need to be holy before God for my next breakthroughs. Talk to God. from today. Behave well for it to happen. Tell the people to sanctify themselves. Wash themselves. Remove all these issues that are ungodly in their behavior so that I can perform wonders for them. Why do you think there are pastors today who use charms to pray for people? They give people breakthroughs using charms. <laughs> uh, they use juju power. The power of God will only work on behalf of those who are pursuing godliness. I'm telling you. Let's pray. Now we understand why we see Christians in this company where this Christian is working. They are busy toying around with him or her. They are holding your payments. They are frustrating you. Delays are like your next order of life frustrated you don't know what is blocking money from coming to you can you imagine the money is blocked by a heart that is not right simple not even by the devil this is serious i had to pray i came a bit late today i needed god to give me grace to preach this message is heavy it's heavy on me i'm worried about it i've never heard anything like this ever since i started preaching all the Christians who've been Christians for two years, three years, and you are not pursuing holiness, maybe you did not know. That's why trouble was like this in your life. We wake up every day to pursue holiness, to perfect it. It means the goal is that today we are approaching the third week of October. Your aim is that by the fourth week, my talk will be extra sweet. There's a goal. My thoughts will be cleaner. My attitude towards others will be sweeter. Anyone that I was having issues with will be totally released and acquitted whether they apologized or not. Because I'm the one looking for the wonders. I'm the one who wants the breakthrough. So I will not allow any stinky, lousy attitude of anyone to block my breakthroughs. Talk to God. My soul say yes. Say yes, say yes, say yes, my soul, say yes, say yes to your will. My soul, my soul, say yes, oh, say yes, say yes. In your prayer schemes, like when you go to your prayer closet, you never cry tears because you really want to align to God's will. 
you you are crying because you say god if there's anything in me witness to go it must go if there's anything you need to remove from my behavior remove it because i want to see your performances when i only cry when there's a serious problem you are so religious you don't cry for god to reveal himself to you you cry for breakthroughs really that's a hedonish behavior I pray that after this service all of us are going to go to our prayer closes to see God again. Because what God spoke is too serious. Can you imagine that God will answer me and you based on your behavior from today? Put your faith aside. And I didn't even need to tell that you've been exercising your faith did things happen? Hmm? You've been reciting. Doors are opening. I'm moving forward. Man is coming. Did it come? No. Answer me now. Did it come? Pray. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, have mercy. This is too heavy for the human being. We need you. We need you Holy Spirit. Change us. Change us, change me. Change me, Lord. Sense of God can anyone just say everyone just say Lord change me. Remove from me anything that is not pleasing unto you. Lembro hashata. Let's pray in the order of Psalm 139. Show is verse twenty-five in the New Living Translation. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. Say, Father, change me. Put that one there in Psalm one thirty-nine. Psalm one thirty-nine be- begins by saying in verse five, nothing. There's nothing that God does not see. This service is not for jokers. Look at it. Look at this, please. Look at it. Let's pray it. Read, 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 pray. Let's read, pray. Just end there. Repeat it again. Point at, touch, touch. Say, Lord, point out, point out. I don't want to miss my miracles. I don't want Father to live a life that God does not show wonders upon. Yes, Lord. Point out anything in me. That is not pleasing unto you. Oh, shala basa kapre lenda kapasuta 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 maya. Oh, shali basu kaya. Point out anything in me that offends you. Put it in the C E V Jesus. Emo ya uinwele no. In Zanuya me give This is your takeaway don't forget it it must ring in your mind and in your heart the whole week any breakthrough you want any miracle you want god will perform it based on your behavior this week based on how you treat people this week based on how you will be talking this week based on your how your heart condition will be this week There's nothing that is tragic to be a Christian on whose life God never manifest. You've been a Christian for years, but you don't have a testimony in your diary somewhere that you once had God say to you. 
Why are his Why is he not talking to you and to me? Because we are not creating that atmosphere. We are too absorbed absorbed by the things of this world. The soon passing away world. You are so busy. No time to seek God. God says fine since you have got no time for me. I also don't have time for you fine. At least no one is bothering each other any each other. You don't bother me, I won't bother you. Let's rise. Pray. Please don't come to today's service like you usually come. Heaven has come down for your next level. Heaven has come down for your next level. Don't joke with today's service. For how long will troubles be making mockery of you? Pray, talk to God. Lena kamasita masuka shataka pastalaya masukanda. Lena masuka bashita maya. Lino kamas tulaya masukanda. It's a week, we are beginning a week with a divine assignment. You'll be pursuing holiness. You'll be pursuing peace with all, not some. There won't be any individual in your scheme of life who you'll have issues with after today. They are all acquitted, no matter what they did to you. Jesus Christ, pray. Lambro Kapazete. Your mission this week is defined. It's not to please men, but to please God. You're on a different mission this week to please God. You don't care about what others do or say. It's not about them. Pray. Without holiness and peace with other people, forget about seeing God showing up in your situations. This is serious. Oh, oh, ah. Thank you, Jesus. Limbra Kapazete. This is one sermon that's taking every person to your prayer closet. Everyone. You are going there with a mission to say, Father, I'm here so that you can point out anything in my life that blocks your performances. Point it out. Point out anything that causes me to pray without receiving answers. Point it out. Lando Castalia Basuka Shata Payanda. It's a week, we're beginning a week that has a serious, serious mission. Perfecting holiness, striving to live at peace with everyone, working hard. The NIV says, said, work hard towards living at peace with everyone. The peace must be worked for, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, this is beyond us. Holy Spirit, this is beyond us. We can only achieve it with your help as long as we cooperate with you. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, I'm a mortal, I'm a sinful mortal, like the Bible says concerning Elijah that he was a man with weaknesses and limitations just like us, but he prayed, 
In the same way, Lord, I've spoken your holy word, a word that is heavy, a word that is beyond the human being. I now commit these precious souls. Each one of them will one day stand before you to even account concerning the word of today. I commit them to you, dear precious Holy Spirit. Your word has told us that our hearts are evil. They are hard. Please work on us. Work on us to be willing. Work on us to be obedient. Work on us so that after this service, we go out with a mission to be doers of the word of today. Help us, Lord, to go out to begin a new pursuit. Oh, may we go out to begin a new pursuit of, of upright living. A new pursuit of holiness. A new pursuit of seeking you like never before. We will not seek for things as we were doing. We will seek to be in alignment. Help us, Lord, because not only because of the breakthroughs we want, Jesus is just about to appear. The rapture is soon going to take place. The Bible says, Bonga la banalil tembalux batao sweet abaya seben donke malangabati lambulula. By a tick all up by a lung is a look thing, a gloom is when we went up. May we align our lives to the word of today going forward. And Father, thank you for the wonders that you will perform the moment we comply. Bless your people by planting in them a willingness to change. In Jesus' name, amen.